We've known for some time that future Volvo products will all be electrified. Going forward, the only decision buyers of the brand will really have to make is whether they want to plug their cars in or not. Those who want to attach to the mains will be opting for one of the company's range of recharge models, either a plug-in hybrid or a full electric variant. This was one of the first of the recharge models to be launched, the XC40 Recharge T5 plug-in hybrid. The XC40 compact SUV was the last of Volvo's models to get electrification, but it was also the first of the company's cars to get a full EV electric version, the XC40 P8 Recharge. But if you can't quite face the thought of going for an all-out EV, or that top variant's price of well over £50,000, then this recharged T5 plug-in hybrid derivative might be more palatable. At well over £40,000, it's still hardly inexpensive, but it can offer up to 27 miles of all-electric driving before needing to revert to its 178 brake horsepower, three-cylinder, 1.5-litre petrol engine. Compromises over the ordinary XC40 model are as few as the visual changes made, and there are plenty of driving mode options to ensure that you can maximise the innovative powertrain's impressive efficiency. With this recharged T5 plug-in hybrid model, the hybrid system's electric motor drives only the front wheels and works via a seven-speed dual-clutch auto gearbox. That motor draws its power from a 10.7 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery situated in the car's central drivetrain tunnel and will take over from the associated 1.5-litre three-cylinder petrol engine to power this Volvo exclusively when you run it in this PHEV variant's provided full electric, pure driving mode. Most of the time though, you're going to be using this XC40 in its normal hybrid drive setting in which the electric motor and the three-cylinder engine cut seamlessly in and out as required. The electrified modes have a specific right-hand driving gauge in the instrument binnacle that replaces the rev counter and a selectable driver performance screen on the center dash monitor can tell you at any given time what's being powered by what. Should you need to press on, there's a sporty power mode, use of which reminds you that there are plenty of braked horses on offer here. In the case of this T5 PHE varied, 180 horsepower from the 1.5 litre engine and a further 82 horsepower from the electric motor. There's also an alternative T4 plug-in hybrid derivative which uses the same powertrain but with a slightly detuned 129 horsepower version of the 1.5 litre petrol engine. Pushing down past the throttle's kickdown point always brings the petrol engine into play, which you'll obviously need to do if you want to replicate the quoted performance figures. In the case of this T5 PHEV variant, the C 62 miles an hour reached in 7.3 seconds. That's 1.2 seconds quicker than the T4 PHEV version. Both derivatives, like all modern Volvos, top out at 112 miles an hour. With this plug-in model, as with ordinary XC40 variants, ride quality is segment leading and refinement is difficult to beat in the class two. Brake recuperation system can make it difficult to smoothly bring the car to a standstill though. And you certainly feel this plug-in variant's extra weight. It tips the scales at over 1800 kilograms when pushing on through the bends. Unlike the full electric P8 variant of this model, this version doesn't have a 4x4 drivetrain, but Volvo nevertheless rather ambitiously provides an off-road option amongst your various driving mode choices. Unless you find yourself in a muddy car park, it's probably best to ignore that one. Visually, unless you happen to pick up the addition of a charging port near the front wheel arch, you probably wouldn't spot any differences between this plug-in hybrid variant and a more conventional XC40. And that's exactly the way Volvo wants it. So there's the usual robot-inspired styling plus 
piercing Thor's hammer LED headlights and a clamshell bonnet, along with an inverted front grille and coupe light rear styling. This hybrid model's entire powertrain is located under the bonnet rather than being spread around the car, as was the case with the industry's earlier plug-in vehicles. The benefit of that is that cabin room and boot space are completely unaffected by the addition of this car's recharge technology. Initially, the cabin seems identical to that of an ordinary combustion engine variant, which means there's a real premium feel. If you find all of that impressive, but a bit somber, you can liven things up a bit with the optional orange finishing for the carpets and door cards that we have here. That'll be a bit much for most Volvo folk. As usual with an XC40, there's a digital instrument cluster. You can vary it via glass, minimalist performance and chrome rings layout options and the right-hand virtual dial switches between being a rev counter, as it is in the power and off-road driving modes, to being a hybrid driving gauge in the hybrid and pure mode settings. You have to look quite closely for this car's other EV-orientated touches, things like the extra B option on the gear shift and the selectable driver performance screen on the centre dash monitor, that option showing a powertrain energy graphic. That centre dash monitor, a 9-inch central touchscreen, has been technologically updated by Volvo in recent times and is now powered by Android, which means that you'll get a raft of over-the-air Google features, including maps and YouTube music, built in. Now, it already allowed you to access lots of useful apps like Glimpse, Yelp, uh, TuneIn and Spotify, plus ones for weather and parking info. Rear seat room has always been an XC40 strong point. It beats most class rivals in this regard. Two adults will be very comfortable, even on longer trips. Uh, this high center transmission tunnel, though, means that uh, space will be somewhat compromised for three folk. Just above it are this pair of rather curiously designed vertical vents, and you get a USB port, plus on this top spec variant, heated rear seat controls too. There are also netted seat back pockets, overhead reading lights, and a center armrest with cup holders. As mentioned earlier, impressively, unlike most PHEVs, the batteries used in this installation don't affect boot space because they're lined along the car's spine rather than under the rear floor. So the ordinary XC40 model's 452 litre luggage capacity figure is unaffected and will be quite sufficient for the needs of most owners. There's this wide right hand strap, bag hooks on both sides and a 12 volt socket on the right. There'll be no space beneath the boot floor if wisely you specify this spare wheel, but you get a standard load through ski hatch for longer items. Fold the 60-40 split rear bench and you get 1,336 litres of capacity. Plug-in hybrid tech remains pricey, there's no other way of saying it. And of course these days there's no helpful government grant to ease the burden of it a little. Uh, now, the least that you can pay for this XC40 Recharge T5 plug-in hybrid front-wheel drive automatic model is around £41,000. Its slightly less powerful T4 plug-in hybrid showroom stablemate costs from around £39,000. And that price reduction is quite important because it means that you'll avoid the vehicle excise duty surcharge that applies over the £40,000 price point. In the case of this T5 PHEV variant, the asking figures equate to a price premium of just over £3,000 over the alternative B5 250 horsepower mild hybrid petrol model. For T5 plug-in hybrid customers, there's a choice of four trim levels. Uh, our design, our design Pro, Inscription or Inscription Pro. That top variant priced at well over £42,000. For your information, the next stage of electrification, represented by the full electric P8 Pure XC40 model, costs around £53,000. 
Our design trim variants like this one get gloss black styling details, including a contrasting color black roof, plus diamond cut or matte black alloy wheels, part leather seats and aluminium dash inlays. Top spec inscription versions, meanwhile, enjoy full leather upholstery, an electric tailgate, wood detailing and a crystal glass gear lever. Desirable options fitted here include a panoramic glass roof and a Harman Kardon premium sound system. As ever with a Volvo, a key focus is safety. An autonomous braking system is standard fit and this system can specifically detect people and animals. There's also an oncoming lane mitigation setup that not only stops you from pulling out into the path of an oncoming vehicle, but can also steer you away from such an impact. At Pilot Assist, Volvo's innovative semi-autonomous drive feature is an optional extra on every XC40, as is runoff road protection and mitigation and cross traffic alert with brake support, which warns you of oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a space. All the efficiency figures for this T5 plug-in hybrid are also exactly replicated by the alternative T4 plug-in hybrid variant. Let's take a look at them. Volvo claims a WLTP rated all-electric driving range of between 26.1 and 27.3 miles, the kind of typical figure claimed by most plug-in hybrids. And as with most plug-in hybrids, the actual real-world results you'll probably get while driving normally is much closer to the 20-mile mark. Except that at the outset, otherwise you'll end up disappointed. Like all cars of this kind, unless you regularly plug in, all you'll be driving is a relatively thirsty, high output petrol model. You can monitor your fuel performance and your amount of electrified use via a rather complex graphical display you'll find on the selectable driver performance screen on the centre dash monitor, showing MPG and battery use per mile. You can increase electrical energy harvesting by regularly selecting this model's additional gearbox B option rather than D. B, increasing the amount of regenerative braking when you lift off the throttle. You'll want to tick the box for the 50 pound optional 3.5 kilowatt hour type two charger. And with this in place, a full charge takes about three hours. The Fantasyland official quoted efficiency stats are up to 135.5 MPG on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 47 grams per kilometer of WLTP rated CO2. As ever though, the important thing is that the government believes them, hence this model's low 16% benefit in kind taxation rate, a uh, major incentive for business purchase. Volvo also throws in a year's free electricity usage. Insurance for the T5 PHEV is Group 32E, it's Group 2080 for the T4 PHEV variant. Maintenance should be relatively affordable for a car of this kind, with three or five year prepaid servicing packages available to help you budget ahead. If you pay extra for the useful on-call with app remote connectivity system, this Volvo can be programmed to autonomously realize when a service is due, then automatically book it for you at a dealership of your choice. Finally, we'll tell you that the warranty is the usual three year, 60,000 mile package. For all of Volvo's trumpeted plans for electrification, the truth is that up until now, models from the brand that are truly electrified have made up a tiny part of its overall sales volume. That has to change, and will, with the introduction of models like this one. The company's short-term aim is for plug-in hybrids to quickly make up 20% of its sales volume, and you have to think that most of that total needs to be accounted for by this recharged T5 plug-in hybrid derivative and its T4 plug-in stablemate. Given the prices being asked here, that might be a challenging goal for the company to reach, but you can't fault the engineering here or the way it's been incorporated into such a pleasing, practical and stylish overall design. 
If you want a compact premium badged SUV with plug-in tech, this is where it's at right now.